my beautiful people my name is Taiwo happy new month and you're welcome back to my channel today easy sewing with Tyke. so on the channel today is a detailed beginner friendly tutorial on how to make this beautiful kimono top that i have on so please ensure that you subscribe if you are yet to and like this video please like this video also put on the notification bell to get notified when i post new videos thank you so if today's your first time of coming across this channel you're welcome thank you for stopping by it's good to have you here and to all my returning subscribers thank you thank you thank you so so much i appreciate you all now let's get started so i'm gonna have to fold my fabric into four but i'll be showing you how i folded it using this piece of fabric so i just folded it into two that way then i went ahead to fold it once more folding it into four so that was just how i folded my fabric okay the fabric is folded into four because the front and the back will be cut together. Here is my start point. The chalked line is my start point and that is because I'll still be needing space for allowance. I'll still need space to add to the shoulder allowance. So that is why I'm starting all my measurements from that chalked line. So the first thing you want to do now is to take the length of the top so the length of the top we're working with today is 20 but i'll be adding three inches to it to get that balloon effect so i'll be using 23 i'll be marking that out then i'll go ahead and add two inches to it for the elastic casing at the end so i'll be making use of a wide elastic at the end so i'll be adding two inches to it if you'll be making use of a small elastic then you can then you might add one or one and a half but i'll be adding two inches today because i'm making use of a wide elastic so in total i have 25 so for my chalked line i'll go ahead and measure 25 and roll it across after imputing the length of the top, the next thing to do now is to determine the wideness of the top. So you notice that this is a kimono top. So the first thing you want to do now is to put in your shoulder measurement. So the shoulder measurement we are working with today is 16. 16 divided by 2 is 8. 16 divided by 2 is 8. I'll go ahead and chalk that down. Then the sleeve length that we are working with today is 13. 13 and i'll be adding one and a half inch allowance for the elastic casing at the end because there will be an elastic at the end of the sleeve for this top in total i have 22 and a half eight inches for the shoulder measurement that's 16 divided by 2 8 13 for the sleeve length and one and a half for the elastic casing at the sleeve opening now it's time to determine the sleeve opening that is how wide the sleeve opening would be remember i said we'll still be having an elastic at the end of the sleeve so it means you want to put double of your elbow measurement because the sleeve length is stopping around my elbow so i'll put double of my elbow measurement there so that i'll have enough fabric to gather when i put in the elastic so i'll be making use of 12 12 is actually fine knowing fully well that when i open it up i'll have 24 in total so that is double of my elbow measurement my elbow measurement is 11 so that is double of my elbow measurement so i'll go ahead and check it out now the next thing to do is to first come in by the one and a half inch that we have left for the elastic casing you know that we're still going to fold it in then you want to come in by another one and a half that is three inches in total then you want to mark it that way then you want to measure that three inches all the way to the end of the of the top so you go ahead and roll a straight line and you will curve it that way just go ahead and curve it this way now to the neckline so you can see that there is no shaped neckline that is it's not you it's not round and all of that it's just an opening it is just straight it's just an opening so what you want to do is to determine how wide you want that opening to be so here when i was drafting this top i actually made use of five and a half i measured out five and a half that is 11 inches in total when it is open but when i was about sewing i discovered that that five and a half inch is just too small that is that 11 is just too small so i ended up using eight inches on fold that is 16 inches when it is opened so you can see that I'm just chalking out the five and a half inches mark. We are not cutting it out too. We just want to notch it and indicate where it stops because you will not be sewing that part. You, that is where your sewing will start from. You understand when we get to the sewing machine. So you are not cutting out any neck shape. You just want to note that 
neck opening okay then i'll go ahead and add one inch sewing allowance at the upper part that way i'll go ahead and add one inch sewing allowance that's the reason why i left that space in the first place so now it's time to cut it So as you can see, I'm just going to notch that five and a half inches mark. Again, if you are drafting simultaneously with me, just go ahead and use eight inches because if you use this five and a half, you discover that it is going to be too small. So just go ahead and notch your eight inches mark. Okay, now it's time to move to the sewing machine where you understand better. So here is the center. That is the sleeve opening. That's the side. So remember that when we, I was drafting out this top, I measured out five and a half for the neck opening. But I discovered that that would be too small. So I went ahead to mark out eight inches. So the minimum that I would recommend is seven and a half. But using eight inches is, the, is fine. So I went ahead to mark out my eight inches. Then I'll go ahead and notch it. That eight inches, 16 in total when it is opened now is my neck opening is my neck opening so i'm making use of a contrasting color thread so you can see what i'm doing especially for this neck area so that you can see it properly so i'll go ahead and open it up i'll go ahead and open it up then i would hold the midpoint with my pin i'll hold it in place then i'll start sewing so starting from the eight inch mark i'll go ahead and sew it using the one inch sewing allowance using the one inch sewing allowance that i left earlier all the way to the sleeve opening i'll do it for this side then i'll go ahead and repeat the same process for the other side so now this is what i have the neck opening has been achieved so i'll go ahead and take this to the ironing table and iron it out i'll press out the seam line so this is what I have after ironing. You can see how beautiful it looks already. And now it's time to finish off the neckline. So there are two ways of doing this. It's either you weave the rough edges, weave the rough edges that you can see there, then use an M gum to fix it onto the body of the dress that way to make it neat. Or you can go ahead and fold it, fold it by half an inch and sew on it. I would be folding it this I will be folding mine. I will be sewing it by half an inch. I I don't mind having my stitch line showing outside. But if you mind, if you do not want your stitch line showing outside, then you can use the first method that is just weave the rough edges and use your M gum, iron your M gum to attach it onto the body of the top. So the next thing I'll be doing is to make a back stitch at the neck opening at both ends that way. This is actually optional but I just choose to do this to be sure that that area is secured and it will not give way. So I'm going to have to iron it out. Now see how beautiful it is. So the next thing to do now is to create the elastic casing at the sleeve opening. At the sleeve opening, remember we added one and a half. So I'll go ahead and create the elastic casing at both sleeve opening. So after the elastic casing has been created, I'll go ahead and cut out the small elastic that I will be passing through this elastic casing. So the measurement of this elastic is my elbow measurement. Remember I said 11. So I'll go ahead and pass it through this elastic casing. After which I will secure the elastic onto the fabric by stitching it down like so. So this is how it looks after I'm done passing the elastic. Now the next thing to do now is to sew it at the sides. So I'll be finishing off the sides using the French seam. So what that means is that I'll be sewing it first on the right side before turning it inside out to sew it on the wrong side. Doing that, I have successfully finished off the rough edges neatly and French seam is achieved. Now the next thing to do is to create the elastic casing at the end. Remember that I added 2 inches to the end, so I'll go ahead and fold that 2 inches, creating the elastic casing for the end. So I will not sew it off completely, I will leave like 2 inches to enable me to pass in the elastic. So the measurement of the elastic that I'm using is 1 inches less of my waist measurement, 1 inch left of less of my waist measurement. So I'll go ahead and pass it in. 
So now this is what I have. I'll go ahead and secure the elastic by sewing it by half an inch, which equals to a total of one inch. Remember that the length of the elastic was one inch less of my waist measurement. So if I sew it by half an inch now, it means I have reduced um, the length of the elastic is actually two inches less of my waist measurement so i do not want it to be too tight so this is perfect after stitching it down i'll go ahead and allow it to go into the elastic casing then i will close off the two inches opening that was left earlier so this is it the top is ready the only thing left to do now is to sew the belt and attach it to the top so now the dimension of this belt is 30 by 4 that is it is 30 inches in length and 4 inches in width so i'll go ahead and fold it into two then i would sew it that way i will leave space in between for turning it out then also at the edge i would give it my desired shape so there's a slanted shape at the edge i'll go ahead and do all of that then i will turn it out and iron it so now this is it I've gone ahead to turn it out and iron it now the opening is still there I'll just go ahead and stitch it down to secure it to close it now to fix the belt onto the top here is what to do make sure that the elastic has been evenly distributed because we will be stitching down on it now locate the midpoint of the belt and locate the side of the top then you want to go ahead you can either sew on it or you can tack it with your thread and needle or you can gum it but it's better you either sew it or you tack it down with your thread and needle i'll be sewing mine and that will be all for today thank you for watching thank you for staying to the end so i hope that you enjoyed this tutorial i hope that you gained value from it i hope that you learned one or two things if your answer to all of this is yes so then please like this video share it leave a comment for me engage let me know what you think okay and you can also connect with me on my instagram page at taiko underscore taiki too and if you're yet to subscribe please do not leave without doing so thank you and see you in my next video bye